Good afternoon, everyone. It is exactly, I think it's 343. Uh, some of you may know Gary Edelman likes very precise times to begin events. Uh, so it is the appointed start time. I'm so happy you guys could come out here. We've never done this before, um, so we're really excited about it. We're, we hope we're, we're going to keep it going. Um, you know, getting all of it together was, was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, we're just so happy to have everyone here. I'm Andrew Dalton. I'm the director of the Adams County Historical Society, and uh, that's all right. <laughs> Good. The enthusiasm was great there. Uh, <laughs> But we've got a lot of fun things planned. We've got some surprises. We've got a ton of prizes for the audience. We have food trucks outside. Um, let me see what I'm forgetting. I do want to make a couple uh, announcements just for uh, um, your, your general knowledge. So the food trucks, if you haven't already noticed, are the Lucky Truck and the Mexican Food Truck. Uh, both are here through the end of the program. There will be an intermission about 5 o'clock for maybe 20, 30 minutes. So if you haven't gotten food and want to, then that's probably a good time. And everyone should have a $10 voucher to use for the food trucks. If you don't have it, just let one of our staff know, and we'll make sure you get that. You get um, so I am going to give a little bit of information away about the prize that the, our champion will receive today. Uh, the first place winner uh, will receive a five-year complimentary membership to the Adams County Historical Society a certificate to fire our cannon uh, outside, which we will be doing tomorrow. I think some of you have signed up. Uh, two tickets for the American Battlefield Trust's August 16th Gettysburg hike. Uh, the contestant will be mentioned in a future edition of Hollow Ground Magazine. And of course, the contestant will be named the ultimate Gettys nerd and receive the trophy, the grand prize trophy over there on the table. <laughs> So you'll hear more about uh, what our other contestants will receive uh, and, and as well as the audience prizes after we get started. Uh, but I wanted to introduce um, our hosts for today's program. I'm sure all of you know them uh, by name and, and reputation already, but I will read a few short bios. Uh, first of all, Tim Smith, our Director of Education, has been a licensed battlefield guide for more than 25 years. He's the author of 10 books, numerous articles, and yep, there we are. Welcome, Tim. He is also the official historian of Adams County, Pennsylvania. We also have Chris White, who is the Deputy Director of Education at the American Battlefield Trust. He is the co-founder and chief historian of Emerging Civil War and the co-creator of the Engaging the Civil War series, a partnership between Southern Illinois University and Emerging Civil War. He is an award-winning speaker and editor, has co-authored, co-authored, or edited nearly two dozen books. Uh, we also have Chris Makowski here with us today. <laughs> Chris, is the <laughs> Chris is the Copey Hill Fellow at the American Battlefield Trust. <laughs> he is the editor-in-chief and co-founder of Emerging Civil War and the series editor of the award-winning Emerging Civil War series published by Savas Beatty. He's also worked as a historian for the National Park Service at Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania, where he gives tours of four major Civil War battlefields. Uh, he's authored or co-authored more than two dozen books and edited a half dozen essay collections on the Civil War. Uh, and of course, uh, so this table over here is for the judges. So if there are disputes over the accuracy of an answer, they will be resolved by these three folks over here. Uh, Chris White also will be manning our scoreboard. And, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and without further ado, the MC of all MCs, the one and only Gary Edelman. <laughs> Gary is the author, co-author, editor of more than 100 books and articles about the Civil War and is vice president of the Center for Civil War Photography. He's been a licensed battlefield guide for nearly three decades and he's chief historian of the American Battlefield Trust. Those are the hosts for today, um, and uh, without further ado, I will now introduce our four contestants. Five. five. <laughs> there is, yes, five contestants. Yep, sorry, we have eliminated one already. <laughs> you can come out. <laughs> come on out, y'all, it's George Maturi, Nancy Hale, Mike Lentz, Pete Vermilia, and Seth Maxfield. Hardiest congratulations to all of them. Uh, we had more than 1,100 people take our pre-quiz and more than 240 signed up to take our qualifier quiz. And of the people who took that quiz, here you have the top uh, scorers. Uh, looks like there's some mess-ups over there. That's okay. 
Uh, that would be my fault. I'm sure I placed those. So we're going to have some fun today, right? You ready to have some fun? This is what today is for, uh, for sure. Uh, Chris Makowski, you ready to have some fun? I'm gonna have a great time. I mean, you know, as I say, look across the room. I think you're all winners because it's a beautiful Sunday and you've given up hours of your time to listen to people answer questions <laughs> about Gettysburg. So you're all Gettys nerds, so give yourselves a round of applause. So what this freak show will uh, consist of is a series of rounds. We're gonna have an in introductory round where you get to meet the contestants. We're gonna ask them some questions. We're gonna ask them more questions and then it'll get more intense and we'll ask them more questions after which we will have a break. During that break, we're gonna ask you some questions, award some prizes, then you'll get a break. Uh, you can, by the way, you can skip the audience questions and you can go out if you would like out to the food trucks or check out the museum at least till 4.58 p.m. And you can uh, do what you'd like during that that time and then when you come back we're gonna ask you more questions because we have a whole lot of prizes everything on that table we want to give away look at those prizes Chris Mikowski what do you see over there ladies and gentlemen we have fantastic prizes <laughs> for you today excellent I was hoping the voice would come in today Chris thank you uh, so we're gonna go through this we're gonna try to wrap up before uh, six and the number one thing as we already said is this supposed to be fun uh, we want to have fun today okay but we do have some rules what do you think Chris well nothing kills fun like rules so let me give them to you okay <laughs> any strength and loss figures come from Busey and Martin all judge decisions are final okay our judges over here Chris any thoughts about the finality of your word I take hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother with 50s. Yeah. So, and um, if you want to make a donation to the American Battlefield Trust via check, it just goes out to cash. That's all you need to worry about. <laughs> Any member of the audience yelling out answers or trying to signal the contestants will be escorted out and then shamed publicly. <laughs> And notice we're filming this, so you will be subjected to possible video shame later on as well. And Gary's very, very good at that, right? And then throughout, the contestants will generally get their own questions. We do not have a buzzer. Note that we have randomly selected their positions on the stage to go with the questions that we have. So we've done as good a job as we can to randomize this for everyone for the sake of fairness. Good, thanks, Chris. And I'm already starting to see some stuff on the feed, even though we're not broadcasting this live right now. It's weird the way that that happens, but some people are starting to ask whether Chris White is connected. No, Chris White is not to be confused with the 7th Georgia Lieutenant Colonel William W. White. Nor should he be confused with Lieutenant Wyman S. White of the 2nd U.S. Sharpshooter. So, yeah, and uh, you guys both have it wrong because uh, William was a full colonel and uh, Wyman was a sergeant here. That's my nerd voice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what it sounds like, Chris. I think you're supposed to do it more like this. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to meet the contestants. Is that right, Chris? I think it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we have taken some time to deeply know our contestants and we want to share their stories with you. So Gary's gonna take a second, go down the line and ask them to open up their deepest, darkest battlefield secrets for you. All right, here we go. Okay, so first is George Maturi. Now George, let's see if your mic is on. Give that a little test there. It is, yeah. good. Yeah. Now George, um, you didn't even sign up to be on this stage. That is correct. <laughs> um, my wife and I, we, uh, we heard about the, uh, the exam being given. And so my wife says, oh, you know a lot about the battlefield. You better take the test. And I said, no. I said, I don't think I'm, you know, I, I really don't want to. About a day later, she tells me, I signed you up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, okay. I said, now um, I'm going to take the test on, uh, I think the date was Monday morning. I, that, that evening, Sunday evening, I, I went to sleep. I said, I'm going to have coffee. Do not disturb me. At 9 o'clock, I'm going to take the exam, and I did, and um, here I am. <laughs> Excellent. Way to go, George. Congratulations. Well, there she is, right in front of me. So there's, there's <laughs> oh, the it's you, I'm huh? Here. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> well, good call, I would say. Now, Nancy. Uh, you once came out of the battlefield, I think it was your first visit, and you were as popular as like the Queen of England, people waving at you. What's up with that? 
Yes, my first visit to the battlefield was about seven years ago. My son was with me, and we were driving around. We were just in awe of all these wonderful monuments. We're driving down Hancock Avenue. We see the Pennsylvania Monument, so we drive around the back so we can see all the sides, and then we drive out Hancock Avenue, and we see all these people waving at us. I'm thinking, oh, these people are so friendly. And then my son says, Mom, you're going the wrong way down Hancock Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> And here she is on our stage. She obviously knows what she's doing now. Thanks, Nancy. Notice, though, that she has to have people on either side of her just to keep her pointed in the right direction. <laughs> Good, Chris. Uh, so next is uh, Mike Lentz. Now, Mike, once you were trying to find a more obscure battlefield memorial or marker, and you had a near almost religious sort of experience? Well, yes, more like an Old Testament religious experience. I decided to go looking for the Willard marker out there near Plum Run. And so what I decided to do was, all right, it didn't make sense to me that the Willard marker would be near the Pennsylvania Monument. It should be opposite the New York Auxiliary Monument. That makes sense. So I park there, and I go into that field. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to find this marker, this monument. I'm getting tore up. Thorn bushes, swampy out there. By about an hour in, I'm looking like a prophet from the Old Testament. I am all torn up. I'm bloody. I'm muddy. So I decided, like a prophet from the Old Testament, to consult a higher authority to find the Willard marker. I pulled out Google. <laughs> so I looked at it and discovered it was a couple hundred yards from where I was. So I decided to continue moving on. Found it. Great. Turned around, and there was a perfectly mowed path from the Willard marker to the Pennsylvania Monument. <laughs> so I saw the light. And again, here he is on stage. Now, Pete, people talk about you know, this a lot on social media and stuff, but it seems like you have a particular issue with Gettysburg ticks. For 25 years, I ran the high school uh, student program at the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College, and my great fear was always having to take one of these kids to the emergency room. So I'd give them every last bit of medical tip I could think of, including make sure you tuck your pants into your socks and spray yourself for ticks. Three times there were emergency room visits. Each time was for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so get all of your uh, insecticide advice from Pete Vermilia as we move on to our last guy now, Seth Maxfield. Now, you once had an experience involving a modern Gettysburg personality halfway around the world? Yeah, indeed. I was uh, about five years ago stationed in Korea watching a Gettys uh, Gettysburg battlefield walk with uh, Matt Atkinson. And uh, I'm just kind of that's, doing... that's your problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just kind of uh, doing chores around the, the apartment, uh, really listening more than watching. And my mom calls and says, hey, can we do a video chat? So sure enough, uh, you know, talk with the folks for a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I'm just doing chores, uh, watching a battlefield walk. It's uh, Matt Atkinson on Joe Davis's brigade. And my dad says, and to put it into perspective, my parents live in Western Canada. My dad says, oh, we went on a tour with Matt Atkinson last week. It was on Joe Davis's brigade. And I scroll right over, right in front of me, on the computer screen, my parents, right next to Matt. <laughs> you were like, Mom, you always do this. <laughs> All right, before we get into our first questions here, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, some of y'all while you were here noticed that I was trying to arrange these things. Now... Before we started, each of the contestants wrote on this piece of paper or picked it randomly and then wrote their names on this piece of paper, which determined whether it would be stage right, stage left, middle, middle left, and middle right, because we had to randomize these. See, there's not going to be a buzzer for today. Everybody gets their own questions, and some people are going to consider some of these questions harder than other people, so we had to randomize this. Plus, as we go, we'll start with George, then maybe we'll start with Nancy, then with Mike, so that's a way to randomize it as we go. Um, one last thing I want to say that we told the contestants is that not only are all the judges' decisions final, but there's absolutely no recourse. Like later, you tell us something was wrong, we don't care. <laughs> we're, we're here to have fun and award the ultimate Gettys nerd. So with no further ado, Chris, take it away. All right, very good. All right, I, I was supposed to say something else. Um, the following set of questions are worth one point each. You will have up to set 10 seconds to answer, um, and this is about the replacements. A great band, by the way. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so. All right, I was hoping, though, that we'd get the Gary Edelman uh, announcer voice with that. Do you, do you have the Gary Edelman announcer? I'll be glad to break it out later. There we go. All right, all right, all right. 
Ooh, it gives me shivers, okay? So the first question will go to George, and then I'll just ask folks to pass the microphones down as their turn comes. George, each question this round concerns officers replacing others. Each question is worth one point. When General Heath was wounded at Gettysburg, who replaced him? I believe that would be General Pettigrew. And our judges say? Correct. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hold on, what we're going to do is, let's go for this, Tim. And that is correct. <laughs> Tim using his usually cheerful voice. <laughs> correct. <laughs> All right, keep going. Nancy, when General Slocum was in command of more than just the 12th Corps, who commanded the 12th Corps at Gettysburg? That would be General Williams. That would be correct. <laughs> All right, way to go, Nancy. <laughs> Michael, when General Hood was wounded on July 2nd, who replaced him? Evander Law. Very good, correct. All right, Ooh. Tim's getting more into it now. Although yep. Gary and I doubt that he ever acted in control of the division yes, until. Yes, that's at least on July 2nd. Real quick, anybody in the audience for a possible prize know Evander Law's middle name? Anyone in the audience? <laughs> Hold on. Now we have it. Uh, One more time like that and you will find yourself in the audience. It's <laughs> Chris, anything to say about that uh, total di flagrant disregard of the rules? <laughs> that might be a half point deduction. <laughs> we'll keep it for now. Well, it is MacGyver. <laughs> you don't get extra credit if anything. God, man. Can I have extra credit for blurting something out? <laughs> All right. Seth, oh, uh, uh, excuse me, Peter. When General Sickles was wounded on July 2nd, who superseded him to command of the Third Corps itself? General Burney. Correct. All right, wait, now, let me make sure it's clear. He was supposed to pronounce that Sickles. Sickles. Stay away from that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Seth. Which Union 6th Corps Major General was moved to command of the 1st Corps after the fighting on July 1? That would be John Newton. That would be correct. All right. All right. We got a perfect round there. Look at that. Things are just neck and neck and neck and neck and neck here after the first round. Here. Now, what do you think, Chris? Are these people in the audience being like, this is amateur night. This is way too easy. Uh, and, and, and anybody want to raise their hand thinking this is too easy? Nobody yet. All right. Okay. <laughs> Seth Maxfield coming. I was, th I was threatening people in the back room. If people get too cocky, I'm going to start uh, asking Vicksburg questions. And since <laughs> this is Gettysburg, people are like, I don't know anything about that. Uh, and so, Let me try this another one for the audience. And only for the audience. <laughs> After 11th Corps Division Commander Francis Barlow was wounded, who commanded his division? Adelbert Ames, well done. We'll keep your eye on you with the Beyond the Battle. I think he's going to get our first trip up to the gift table. Pick what you'd like. I think it's Adelbert and not Adelbert. Well, I prefer Adelbert, as a matter of fact. So. <laughs> I thought it was just Adele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, we're on fire. So here we go. We're moving on to still round one, but another set of questions here. Location, location, location. All answers are of a Gettysburg place and are worth two points each. All right, and we'll start this round with Nancy. I am a much discussed but still questioned fortification on Culp's Hill constructed by the 137th New York. What's my name? Can you repeat the first part of the question? I am a much discussed but still questioned fortification on Culp's Hill. Constructed by the 137th New York. What's my name? David Ireland. Let's, let's give her a chance. Uh, you know, I want to make sure the question was, was clear. Do you want to show her that question? So, no, because then it shows off the other questions. Oh, yeah, we can't do that. Right? So, um, so I'm looking for the, the traverse. The, uh, the traverse. That is correct. That all is right, correct. good. Thank good. You, very much. you see that the judges are not all mean. Now, now, Chris, do you have some sort of reluctance here in letting that happen? 
Well, he's the Simon Cowell of us. So if he, <laughs> if he gives it to us, then I think we're all right. I'm the easy one. Hundreds and checks. That's all I need. Uh, just note that if a question is unclear or you can't hear it, contestants, you see that you are allowed to ask um, something about it, but not afterward. Okay. Yeah, these are all first-person uh, um, topography questions, I guess. So uh, Now, in this question, Michael... I am a knoll just north of Little Round Top with infantry and artillery monuments. I lacked a common name until I was cleared of timber a couple decades ago. Munchauer's knoll? That is correct. Good, good. Well done. Now let me ask, Tim. This is a name that is new on the battlefield, and we might have wanted to call it something different. We didn't really know that that knoll was there till it was cleared of timber, and I think it's on the, near the property of George W. Bushman, if I'm correct, right? That's right. I think we used to refer to it as Northern Little Round Top. Until North we're... Little Round Top. Wow. Little, little, little Round Top. <laughs> Baby Round Top. <laughs> All right, Pete. I am a large group of boulders, technically on Big Round Top, and I sit roughly equidistant from the crest of Devil's Den and the 83rd Pennsylvania Monument. Um, the Devil's Kitchen? That is correct. Wow, look at that. Good job. You guys feel the suspense in the room there? My word. He was, was feeling a, the heat. I was like nervous for oh, him there. All okay. right. Okay. All right, Seth. I am a less discussed hill, and I most famously host a road called Lost Avenue. That Powers Hill? No, that would be Wolf's Hill. Wolf's oh. Hill. Oh. So now we see what it's like when something's not right and Tim gets to answer just <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, Tim. Hey. I don't have much of a role, so I have to you know, expand it. It's not the end of the world here. There's a lot of questions left. Man. It was like disappointing a father. I'm surprised there wasn't a head shake like, no. no. Is that like the, I expected a little more out of you? Man. What okay. are they teaching at West Point these days? <laughs> don't wow. worry. Don't Damn. worry. There'll be lots of missed questions. <laughs> All right, George. I am a short distance south of the Chambersburg Pike and was once rockier than I was during the battle. Virginians advanced through and around me on July 1st. Uh, would that be the quarry? That would be the quarry. Wow, all right, yeah, good. Very good, very good, very good. Again, we have an extra question uh, for the audience here. Uh, it's called the Just In Case We Need It question. I am a place, again, just call it out. I am a place where you could get water on Raffensburger's property below East Cemetery Hill and north of Stevens Knoll. Who said that first? I heard it back there. Good. Take a trip up to the table, sir. Well done. Menchie's Spring. Raffensburger Spring is on Menchie's property. And Menchie's Spring is on and Menchie's Spring is on Raffensburger's property. They're switched. All right, so Chris, where are we at after these first two two rounds? So we have a four-way tie for first at three points, um, and unfortunately our German teacher from West Point is uh, down to one, or ein point. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, Chris White. There we go. All right, I think, if, unless I'm wrong, uh, Chris Bukowski, are we on to boots and booms here? We are boots and booms. Each question concerns artillery or cavalry. And is worth two points. So, Gary, you're jacking up the stakes on us here on this round. Yes, this is definitely two points here. And, you know, I do, you know, Andrew Dalton was concerned we'd move too quickly through this, that we're not taking up enough time. So, more banter is encouraged. Okay. Yeah. Like, right. we're really, it's only 4.07. I don't know. It's are. not written into my script. How do I banter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, we're concerning ourselves with the boomsticks and the butter knives, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. There you go, man. Yeah, is that the type of banter we're looking for, sir? Uh, I don't know. What do the judges say? <laughs> the audience already voted. They didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> And, we, and they were actually warned that if they try to tell a joke and the audience doesn't laugh, don't do it again. So. <laughs> All right, Mike Lentz, you're out. Okay. <laughs> All right, Michael. Boots and booms. Each question concerns artillery or cavalry. Two points apiece. 
The initials of what cannon designer appear on every original cannon barrel made at the West Point Foundry that includes a wrought iron reinforcement band around the breech? We need either all three initials or the first and last name. Robert Parrott. That is correct. All right. Good, good. Good job. And of course, it's RPP. Uh, anyone in the audience, maybe for a prize, maybe not, know what the middle P stands for? MacGyver? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Who said that? Raise your hand. Go up to the prize table there. Well done. Woo. Good. Parker. Robert Parker. Here. I was going to say prize for the P, but I like this better. <laughs> yeah, I think it was better. By the way, what, what are some of the things we have up there on that prize table, Chris White? Oh, so we have many things that were in my office that I wanted to get rid of. <laughs> uh, so we have the American Battlefield Trust. We have a fleece up here. We have polos. We have T-shirts. We also have Amazon and Starbucks gift cards. And then we have a beautiful water bottle and a Getty's Nerd shirt, which uh, was just given to us here right before we started. So all kinds of different things. But more specifically, I think Gary wanted me to point out the Urinal Journal. <laughs> It's a real book, yes. I think a few people have this. I had a lot of these in my office when I started, and I was like, what is this? And it's Gary's book, The Urinal Journal. It's a real book. So if you would like one, you may win a prize. I am dead serious about that. I, I think you might find it funny. Uh, it's, a, it's the complete book of men's bathroom uh, behavior. Uh, so you'll find familiar stuff in there, whether you are a man or connected with Necton. And I just want to say that the Gettys Nerd shirt is being uh, actually worn today by its original designer, Ed Lucas, if you'll raise your hand there, man. He is the first one I know to use the term Gettys Nerd. And that was about uh, eight years ago or something like that. So What's that? <laughs> do you want to stand up and do a little spin there? All right, good. Here we go. I keep asking Gary to put his urinal journal in his professional biography, and he doesn't. I don't know. As, as things started going better for me, this was written in 06, I confess that I was wondering if that would sink me. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. I wonder what research he did for that book. Okay. Very personal. <laughs> Peter, all right. Name two of the Confederate brigades who were engaged on East Cavalry Field. Wade Hampton and Chambliss. That is correct. Good, good. Well done. For, for no points, Pete, do you know any of the others? Um, Jenkins, Jenkins is correct. And Fitz Lee, good, good. All right, well done, man, you got it. Well, somebody cared about East Cavalry Field. All right, good, did he get points for that one? It looks like he did. He did, all right. All right, Seth, which of John Buford's three cavalry brigades was not on the field on the morning of July 1st? That would be the reserve brigade under Wesley Merritt. Well done, oh, that is correct. Oh, sorry, well done. <laughs> Well, way to go, contestants. You're passing that mic very effectively. Uh, yeah, they're excellent, excellent. George, which artillery battery lost the most guns to Confederate capture at Gettysburg, not including temporary losses? I need first and last name of the battery commander or number and state designation. James Smith. That is good. good. Thank you. Yes, since there's so many temporary captures, I was worried that might be a tough question. Yeah, that's good. Well, not for George. Now, to dig out of that hole you created for yourself earlier, uh, George, do you either know his middle name or the numerical designation of the unit? Fourth New York Independent Battery. All right, good, good. Well done. All right, what do you think, Chris? Is he back in your decent graces? Yeah, yeah, I think he's, I think he's doing all right, but, um, you know... I'm seeing a theme with some of these questions of someone who may have written a book about an area south of town, near this little hill, with all these rocks. True, true story. I was on vacation for two weeks and uh, had to come back and bang these questions out. But, you know, I mean, I'm not a calf guy and there's calf questions, so. I don't think you wrote those. <laughs> <laughs> 
Chris, I think there's a whole section here about Second Fredericksburg, too. I think. <laughs> the, uh, Nancy, the Army of the Potomac organized its batteries into brigades. Into what did Confederates organize their batteries? That would be battalions. That is correct. Wow, man, it, this is uh, this is a strong showing. Very strong. You know, I could see that at, during the break we might be toughening up some of these questions yeah. there, adding another round perhaps, mm -hmm. 70 points per question perhaps, something <laughs> like that. That would really separate things going on here. Um, and is there still another one here? Uh, there is a bonus question. Okay, good, good. You want to ask that one for the audience and then I might right. call, call an audible. Watch out. All right. Name the letter-like clearing on the south end of the battlefield that boasts a regimental monument. Letter-like clearing. Oh, who's that? Oh, you already won. So you don't... Okay. He would know? <laughs> All right, well so, done. So the answer was the D-shaped hill. Okay. okay, good. Well, I think what I'm going to do, one of the audi audibles, is let's do a couple of audience questions here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's, like some of the ones that we have there, and we'll involve them, and then I'm going to... Do some of those audience questions then, and we might do another round before the break as well. I think we should. Okay, yeah, good, good. So first, Chris, you want to hit him with some of those questions? Then? All right, so since we've been talking about cavalry, the Union cavalry had a cavalry corps. What did the Confederates have for their cavalry? And, and nobody gets more than one prize, so don't answer if you already have. Ah, who said, ooh, that? Who said that? Where'd that? Oh, Phil oh, Spoggy back there. Oh, Were you yeah, holding back? Oh, I know man. you knew that one. Take a trip on up, man. <laughs> Woo! Well done. Very good. Very good, Phil. All right. So it's a little kind of funny to me. Like, you start asking these cavalry questions, and some people are just like, huh? <laughs> Horses. Yeah, and that's kind of about... <laughs> So which street comes into the town square from the north? Oh, Carlisle, I hear Carlisle over Did here. you hear it over there? Who was it? All right, take a trip on up. Very good, well very good. You guys are doing all right, you guys are doing all right, okay. Just keep going, Gary? Oh yeah, man. All right, okay. Name the furthest south Confederate state memorial at Gettysburg. Oh, I heard it from two people at the end. Was that somebody right behind you? Yeah, I heard it from two different people. All right, how about this? If you think you said it, raise your hand. How many? Oh, come on. Do you really think that we're four of you? <laughs> well, we, although we never said who was right or not, so a lot of people said a lot of stuff. Oh, yes. Who, who, said, who thinks they said Alabama at the same time? Wow, we're coming up. What do you think, judges? I give them both uh, because he's honest and he answered. And these guys are liars? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> All right, take yeah. you two up to the table. All decisions are final, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we should let him have a prize, too, because he was... What about the other guy who I'm said so, it? I'm sorry, Chris McCall. Oh, I, I didn't even hear that. That's a, we're, we're a judge now? I'm are just we? trying to go to... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just trying to go to bat. Poor Alabama gets no love, so I was just kind of... Excited. We can give him a prize. We have a few more. Don't worry. Right, okay, you want to give right, a prize? You, try I'll again. Try again. Right? Yeah. Well, if I can go back to the Old Testament a little bit, as yeah. one of the Jews in the room here, not too many of us, I think, to what uh, you know, Old Testament stuff Mike Lentz was talking about. What is he, chop liver? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who was the oldest general at Gettysburg? Wrong. <laughs> was that your Tim Smith there? No, that was him. That was actually Tim Smith. <laughs> yeah, that was Tim. It's, it's, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not Tremble. Not Williams. Williams is only 51. He had some extra years on him. <laughs> oh, we got it yeah, right there here. We go. Craig right. gets it right. <laughs> Will, extra Billy Smith, brigade commander, is the oldest, right, Tim? Yeah, I think, uh, 
I think 63? 65. No, 65. Yeah. Oh. Now, 65. Now, George Sears Greens is younger, but Tim, I think that you usually say something about his birth and death dates. Let's hear it. He was born in 1801 and died in 1899. And? He did not want any part of any other century. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we got Tim on the laugh circuit here, uh, let me just get this out of the way because it's bound to come up. By far, I've been a guide for a long time. We hear a lot of terrible Civil War jokes, but I think by far the worst one has to be the following that concerns Tim's favorite civilian here at Gettysburg, Jenny Wade. Let's hear your joke, man. Why was Jenny baking bread for the soldiers? Because she needed the dough. <laughs> God. That's just and, and it's so cringeworthy. It was actually on the written quiz, and George got that question. <laughs> I knew the answer too. I knew the answer. <laughs> okay, let's see. Did you finish yours yet? No, we've got one Chris? question left on this bulleted list. Here. All right, good. All right, name a water course known as a run besides Plum or Willoughby's. Stevens goes up. I heard it from, yeah, here and maybe there. You, you two go up. What else we got? Willoughby. Be besides, besides Willoughby. And Plum. Any others? Roses. Roses run. Well done, man. That's very good. Good. And what's that really obscure one you like, Tim? The Alms House run. God. <laughs> That's really getting obscure. It's like right there. here, beside the building. <laughs> I was going to answer dysentery. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Chris, go ahead up to the prize table there. And I'll give you the urinal, the urinal journal, journal to go journal. with all of yours. <laughs> uh, by the way, here, I'll put in a little plug. Uh, has anybody helped contribute to the effort to help save property around Willoughby's Run? Anybody? All right. Thank you all so much. So the trust has got an effort underway. We your help so please donate now and you can get yourself a free gift from the tenant and okay. remember make those checks out to cash and give them to chris white <laughs> yeah <laughs> um okay so i'm going to read this direct from the it's not a script it's an outline it's not a gang it's a club anyone get that back from the 70s good okay um let's see to the best nerdiest civil war clothing items in the crowd as determined by gary Okay, so I'm going to point at a few people whose clothing items I've already noticed who haven't yet gone up to the table. Now, first of all, let me be super biased. He's wearing an American Battlefield Trust Color Bears hat. Go up to the table. Both of you. <laughs> Just because of how they look, okay? And let's see. There was a couple other here. Of course, he hasn't gotten anything yet, but Ed Lucas for the Gettys Nerd shirt. Now, don't take the Gettys Nerd shirt that's up there. That would be weird. Okay? And let's see. Now, let me ask you something, Andrew Dalton. Would you consider this facility a nerdy facility? Absolutely. All right. Then there you are, Joey. Head on up there for the <laughs> Adams County Historical Society shirt. That's just a nature shirt. That doesn't count. And Tiedem Institute, you've already been up there. Well, let's see, she's wearing a Gettysburg College shirt. Is that what that is? A, it is an educational institution, but I don't think it's very nerdy. How about an epic mustache in the back? That's an epic mustache. That it is. All right, head on up, sir. <laughs> you could be a brigade up? commander at least with that mustache. All right, so Craig Calandro is already on the list there because he has the legendary get off my lawn shirt, but he's already gone up. He says he's going to go up and donate it to someone. Why not just give us someone else the slot? What do you think? Like, what if you pick an extra large and they're a small? <laughs> go on up, man, but give it to someone else. Okay, so Chris Mikowski, I think we're going to move on. All right, things are getting real. So, things, yeah, things are getting the real now. From, that came from the script. Gary wrote that on the script. Yeah, and I'll say that, you know, this round might be bisected by a break, um, I believe. Do we have a mini break or just, no, we just have one full break. So I think we're going to do a mini round here, bisected by the break, and then we're going to come back and finish the round. Okay. Something All like right. that. Okay, you sound skeptical, Chris. No, no, Is that I'm, okay? I'm, 
I'm doing whatever you tell me to do, Gary. Okay, wow, that's scary. <laughs> I, I tend, ask my team, I tend to ask them to do things. I really don't really tell people to no, do this stuff. No, this is what it, how it plays out. Hey, Chris, I have this idea. I don't know what it's going to consist of, but in the end, we're going to have fun. And I'm going to go to Hawaii, so figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's pretty realistic yeah. there. It's more like, let's see, I, know, I don't know what it is yet, but it's going to rule. Uh, that's what it's like working with me. So there you go. All right, so what are we at now? So we are in um, what's in a name. All questions concern names, and each question is worth two points. And who are we starting with here? Uh, we're going to start with Peter. What... Two names come between Gettysburg General John and his last name, Ward. Henry Hobart. That is correct. Yeah, very good. He, he did it again. The yeah. dramatic pause. <laughs> now, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Well, well done. So did you know the answer right away? <laughs> All right, good, good. Of course, John Henry Hobart Ward survives the battle of where? Where did he fight again, guys? Perhaps Devil's Den. Okay, he fought at Devil's Den. He, he, he's going to have a brigade there with, uh, I don't think this is a question, with more regiments and with more people than any other brigade in the Union Army. And um, he's going to end up surviving the Battle of Gettysburg, get dis getting dismissed from the Army for charges of drunkenness or inappropriate behavior eventually, survives all that, goes up long after the war to visit his daughter in Orange County where he is run over by a train. <laughs> Man. We all have some sort of an end coming, I guess. And you can learn more about Devil's Den and the Devil's Den in History and Memory book by Tim Smith and Gary Edelman. And <laughs> Thank you. Is, are there still copies up there? No, they went fast. Oh, they did? Wow, good to know. Tim and I will sign them for 100 bucks. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a steal right there. Okay. <laughs> Seth, are you ready? I'm ready. Provide a full name associated with either of these nicknames. Clawhammer or Maryland? Can I do both? Ooh, there's an overachiever. Oh, Cam, Cam Maryland Stewart, and Vincent Clawhammer Witcher. That is correct. I assume I don't get extra points. Well, uh, let's see. I mean, d yeah, I think it's only, so not extra points, Chris? Well, uh, one was correct. Yeah, because what's, what's Witcher's first name? William. Is it William? I think it is William. Mm. But is Clawhammer not the coolest nickname at Gettysburg? But he did, he did get George's name first, so you know, his first answer was correct. Yes. Very good. That's good. And let me just say, uh, uh, you know, it's that really cool nickname, but he's in the calf, so nobody's heard of it. <laughs> oh, see, I'm not supposed to tell any more jokes now. That didn't go well. Uh, it looks like you have some cavalry fans in the audience, man. <laughs> I'll give you the claw hammer. So. All right, All right George, are you ready? I hope so. All right, one good George deserves another here. Let me, let me just say real quick that this is, I think, Maybe the hardest question of the round. So it comes back to George, but this is totally random. Go ahead. It comes back to George in many ways, as you'll hear. Take Generals George T. Anderson's and George Sykes's nicknames and put them together. Tick, tock, tick. What was the second uh, general? George Sykes. Sykes. Uh, would that be... Uh, Tide Tardy? That would be correct. Woohoo! Well done. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Andrew just said unbelievable. We're Unbelievably gonna to, nerdy. We're going to have to write more questions. That's yeah, I think so. Uh, we also would have excited, uh, accepted Tardy Tide. They both would have worked. They didn't have to be in the right order. Excellent, excellent. All right, Nancy. What was Colonel John Brooks' middle name? I have no idea. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to accept. No, As the so, you know. no. his name would be Rudder. Rudder. John Rudder Book. Rudder. 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 Is he any relation to the Rudder's convenience stores? <laughs> when he was charging through the wheat field, he was selling iced tea and milk. <laughs> <laughs> he got that idea from George Pickett in his buffet. I think that's where I came from. <laughs> 
I've always felt like, you know, that like in the heat of the day, he's charging across that field and say, one day we will be memorialized with an all you can eat buffet on this spot. <laughs> you know, that's going through his head. Man. Uh, <laughs> you wanted to hit a little Colonel Sanders in the KFC next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A, I want gravy on those biscuits. Uh, so. All right, Michael. What was General Ambrose Wright's nickname? which is also the same as the first four letters of a Union Reserve Artillery Brigade Commander's surname. Rands. Hmm. That is correct. And do you want the surname as well? No? That's well? Hmm? Do you want the surname as well? Oh, yeah. Ransom? Okay, and what is Ransom's first name? <laughs> it's a cool one. Um, million Dollar Ransom? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, anything, is that worth anything there? Eh. Anyone in the audience or on stage know Ransom's first name? Dunbar. Okay, hold on. Did you say it at the same time as him? Did, did someone whisper it to you? No. It suddenly came to you? <laughs> Chris, anything happen in here? Collusion. Okay. <laughs> there was no collusion. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Oh, you're getting into dangerous territory there, Chris. We're going to make someone angry. I'm just saying. All right, you want to ask the, in case we need a question for Thanks. the... Uh, very good. For the audience. What middle name belongs to the tallest Union Division commander who was also first mayor of San Francisco? <laughs> white. Who said white? Well done. Take a trip up there. Yes, it's John Geary, but his middle name. He also happened to command the White Star Division, which is pretty cool. Again, you know, he had the star because he's 12th Corps and red, white, blue, first, second, third division. So he's got the second division there. Now, Chris White, how are we looking on scores there? Ooh, it is very tight at the top. We have seven points for Peter, George, and Michael, Nancy, and Seth are at five points each. All right, so still within striking distance, right? That's right. Hey, which is a fantastic movie filmed in my hometown of Pittsburgh. Striking distance? Oh, yeah. Chris, you came from Pittsburgh? I don't think we know that. You, I never talk about my hometown. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris Mikowski, anything to add here? Because I don't think we're moving on. Okay, no, he's doing all the adding over there. I'm a writer. Nobody said there'd be math involved. I'll let him do that. Okay, that now. sounds good. But anything to add before we maybe move to break? Um, is everybody having a good time? No. Yeah. Do we have time? I don't think we have time for food trucks right now. Hold on, there is no time. There is no time. I think there is about to be time for food trucks. Why? Huh? This, is, this is the sole break. We've oh, eliminated oh, is, the mini Oh, this break. is the big break. This, this is, is going the, to be the big this break. This is the big break. Well, then, yes, this is food truck time. I'm really glad we walked all through yeah, this earlier yeah. today and worked <laughs> this out step by step. We totally did. That's the tough part, man. But, you know, everything's happening a little bit quicker. I mean, that's Andrew, right. I saw this coming. Why didn't you? It's actually not time for the break, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, see, I, I actually see one more set of questions. Yeah. Oh, is that, that's what margins. it is. Okay. We have one more. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm not on stage. <laughs> All right, go ahead, sir. All right, so uh, each question concerns the infantry, and it's worth three points. But as Gary has suggested, the stakes are high. So after this, we will be eliminating the two lowest scores. But note that these are three-point questions, so anything can still happen here. That's right. And we do have an eliminator tiebreaker if need be. Right, right, right. So here we go. Seth, are you ready? I'm ready. Name any three of the eight brigades at Gettysburg with more than 60% casualties. Iron's got to be one. Go Garnet for two. And um, Pettigrew for three. I think you got two of the three. All right. Uh, so which two are right? Uh, Meredith's Brigade, the Iron Brigade, is correct. And Garnett's Brigade is correct. And, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about percentage. Yeah. You so know, Pettigrew definitely has the highest, ha highest total loss. While we're asking the other questions, maybe one of us should make sure that that's correct. Just back at Busey and Martin while we're doing it. But we think it's right. <laughs> so who, who's the third? Uh, well, there are eight others, um, Tim, or I'm um, sorry, four, uh, six others, really. Rowley, um, Stone, 
Um, Iverson, of course, Armistead, and Lang. And Paul. And, and Paul. Paul is actually so number one, Okay, I yeah. think. Yeah, because of the massive amount of capture. All right, so close. Two out of the three. Does he get any oh. points for that, Chris? Since it's three points, I'll give him two. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, I think he's setting up. Now, Chris, does that mean that if anybody else gets two-thirds of a question right, they're going to get two points? This is all yeah. arbitrary. I make it up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you quoting Indiana Jones there? <laughs> Maybe. All right, well done. All right, George. Name the two infantry divisions at Gettysburg that contain five brigades. Five brigades. I'm going to uh, guess the first one as uh, Anderson's division. And the second one would be Rhodes's division. That is correct. Wow, well done, man. And is Seth on the end saying, like, why didn't I get that question? You should have, you should have a different piece of paper, man. But maybe you would have gotten tardy tig then as one of your answers, too. All right, uh, you know, just note that, that union, the union doesn't have that many brigades. They don't pack brigades into their divisions, and that's why most battles, even outside of Gettysburg, are union corps fighting against Confederate divisions. Confederate divisions are a lot larger than union divisions. Nancy, name the two, oh, let me see, uh, um, let's see, I lost my place here. Name one of the regiments that charged toward the railroad cut with the 6th Wisconsin. That would have been the 14th Brooklyn or the 84th New York. That is correct. One of the units. Good, good. Tim, are, are there other units we would have accepted? Uh, we would have accepted the 95th New York also. All right, good, good. Right. Well done. Very good. Well, looks like Nancy, I think you have a little fan club right on the second row right here. <laughs> She's wearing an American Battlefield <laughs> Trust t-shirt. I wonder why I didn't uh, give her a trip to the prize table. That's kind of strange, isn't it? All right. <laughs> Michael, who commanded the brigade that included the Harper's Ferry Cowards? George Willard. That is correct. All right. We would have also accepted Eliakim Cheryl, who took over after he was killed. Now, speaking of providence in Old Testament, it just happens to be the story he told about coming here was about that very brigade. So well done on the picking of the piece of paper, man. <laughs> Chris. Peter, what regiment did Colonel James C. Rice command as the battle commenced? Here we go again. He's just going to wait for a while. <laughs> 83rd Pennsylvania. No. Oh, that would be the uh, 44th New York. Oh, so 44th New York. Adjacent regiment, so. Yeah. So just one regiment away, Chris. Does he get any points for that? Sorry. I can't, I can't do it. Can't, can't do the one I regiment like you, away. Thank you, Peter. This is, this is. Yeah. So James. Did you hear the audible gasp? They're like, oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, the audience is really. Some of the, some of the panelists are shaking their heads. Oh, no. Oh, no. The, the, the audience, like, doesn't want anybody to be eliminated here. Now, first of all, for anybody in the audience, do you know James C. Rice's middle name? <laughs> Chris, any points for that? Um, I liked it. <laughs> it's James Clay Rice. And what did he ascend to a later in the battle? He ascended to dead. Yeah. James C. Rice did not. Well, later he did. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he, yeah, he becomes uh, Vincent's brigade commander. Yeah, he supersedes Vincent after he was in command of the 44th. Good. Um, was that our last one for now? That is. We have our bonus question that we can give to our audience. Yeah, let's do that while Chris is tabulating the results and see where we are. We know it's super complicated. I mean, there's five people <laughs> with two digits. So, <laughs> What New Yorker famously repaired a flagstaff on Culp's Hill during the battle? We'll take a surname. New Yorker famously repaired a flagstaff. Clearly no one read our book, Chris Mikowski. I, I yeah. think I see Sarah Byerly from the trust like bursting to give the answer. No? Okay. There's a picture of it on the monument. It's on the monument. Oh, it's killing Craig here. William Lilly. William Lilly. And by the way, uh, head on up to get the prize. Not for the answer, but for the awesome shirt. 
Maybe you'll pick another of the same shirt. Now, Andrew, are you coming up here uh, to do something in a sec? Chris, what do we got? Okay, so right now uh, we have Michael and George in the lead with 10 each. Uh, Nancy's in third place with eight points, and Seth and Peter are in uh, fourth and fifth place with seven. All right, so what does this mean? It sounds I think like we're going uh, we're gonna, to we're gonna bid farewell. I think we need a tiebreaker, though. To, to no, no, because we're eliminating two. Um. But we still need to, there's different prizes. For oh, yes, days. you're right. Oh. There's different, so we have fourth and fifth. <laughs> oh. good, good call, Andrew. So we do happily, oh, yeah, we, we do have an elimination tiebreaker. This is going to be one of those yell it out ones, okay? So uh, Chris is going to ask this. Hold on. I'm going to ask him to rephrase the question, though, So because this one's done with speed. You can just ask. I'll just ask it. Then give, uh, give one of them your mic. Okay. And then let's give Pete the other one. George, if you'll pass that down there. This is for the difference between fourth and fifth place. Call it out as soon as you know it. What unit was commanded by Henry K. Bergwin? 26 North Carolina. Uh, who said that? Pete, Pete with fourth place here. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> Seth Maxfield with fifth place. Congratulations. And this is fifth out of 1,100 people That's who right. took our qualifier. Go ahead, Andrew. Thank you, Gary. In fifth place, we have a signed copy of Devil's Den at Gettysburg by Tim Smith and Gary Edelman and a $40 gift card to Starbucks. Congratulations. Nice. Woo! Nice. Gary, did you... Uh, That's four. For fourth place, we have a $25 gift card to the Dobbin House, one of our uh, sponsors of today's event. Two tickets to the October 5th Seminary Ridge American Battlefield Trust program and a $40 Starbucks gift card. Congratulations to both of you. Well done. But wait, there's more. There is more. more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> if anyone knows, I love giving out awards. And these are the I Survived the Ultimate Get Us Nerd Quiz 2024 participation trophies. I expect to see selfies on the battlefield with those. <laughs> okay, so I think what is, are we going to break? Am I finally up yes, to speed here? Do we have some audience questions first, I think? Uh, we do we? Do I thought they'd come at the end. Do I have more? Oh, I do have more. Yep. Thanks, people, for keeping me. Gary, I have 470 questions in our database. Yes, One we do more. have lots. Okay. <laughs> so, again, remember, if you've already gone up, don't answer, please. That'll just make it easier. I believe this is, yes, these, right before the break. Okay. Chris? I'll ask one and then you'll catch up, okay? All right. All right, this one was mine. Uh, from what bronze objects was the goddess of victory and peace sculpture atop the PA memorial made? Cannons, was that you? Well done, take a trip up. Yeah, it's made entirely of melted down Civil War cannon barrels. Gary, it almost sounded like you were doing your, your Tim Smith impression with the piece and the, and the uh, cannons and everything. It sounded like you were doing your Tim Smith My Tim impression. Smith would have been goddess of victory and peace. Is that right? <laughs> Who was the medical director for the Army of the Potomac? Well, that was like 17 people said that. Well, no. I'm just going to pretend nobody answered and we'll do a different question. Because that was... Uh, too many answers. Yeah, yeah. Why did you put that one on there, Chris? It was, it was right there. You wrote I'm it. I'm just reading by rote, uh, following directions here. Uh, which photographer's team, you're not allowed to answer this one. Which photographer's team was the only one to record photos of the dead in the aftermath of the battle? Oh, oh I heard a gardener from over here. Oh my God, it's our slighted person from the back there. Go ahead, man. Woo! In fact, Go ahead and take two things off the table if you want. Oh, and a high five at the back. <laughs> From a fellow winner. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. All right. What was the name of the former mini golf course on the Baltimore Pike? I heard it right over here. Who was that? Red shirt guy? Oh, no, behind you. There you go. Dude, stand up. Take a thing. Uh, Mulligan McDuffers. Okay, now read, sling this, this one toward important. the end here. Very important. The members of this awesome organization preserved and restored that site. <laughs> Chris, who got that one? Um, I heard it yelled from over here, actually. Yeah, but I saw someone who already got a prize yell it, and okay. she's wearing a right. trust very, shirt. Very, very good, very Hold good. Right. Somebody's pointing to him. We'll yep, believe yep. it. Go we'll ahead. believe it. We'll believe it. We'll believe it. I think there was like 16 people over here doing it as well, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> you already got a prize. And then someone yelled Jonathan Letterman again. So. <laughs> uh, which hill sits across the pike from this site? Not this site. Oh, what was that? Who was that? Have you gone up yet? All right, take it up. Well done. Powers Hill. So we're, we're still referring to the golf course. Yes, that was referring to the golf course. That wasn't clear. All right. Who laid out the town of Gettysburg? Getty, I heard a Gettysburg. How about a first name? Oh, God. I heard a woman back there, and I heard you, sir. Uh, who? Who? All right. Uh, who, who said it back there behind him first? Okay, you and you go up. Are we still at prizes, Chris? Oh, we still have prizes. Is your office empty? No, God, no. <laughs> All right, good, good. <laughs> Another very important question. What I awesome like <laughs> organization endeavors, among other things, to tell the story of Gettysburg's civilians? <laughs> I, I heard someone right around here starting I, first. I got one here. <laughs> All right, good. Both of you then. You and whoever Chris pointed to. Thank well done. You. It's time. Is it time for the break? It's time. It's time. I told you guys it was time for the it's break. Time. Okay, so first of all, let's give our uh, fourth and fifth place winner here a round of applause. Well done, <laughs> Pete, Seth. I think it, in those first couple of rounds, it was really tight, and then things got a little tougher as we went. Congratulations, you all. Um, we are going to reconvene. I'm not looking at this. At uh, I think about five nine eighteen. Five eighteen. Five eighteen. We're going to have more quiz questions. We have some visual questions coming up after this. If you don't care about the visual questions, you can come back at five twenty-two. Okay. <laughs> questions already then. Thanks. You're welcome to bring the food back up here too and eat it. Yeah, you, you can like. eat up here. Sure. Or downstairs, anywhere in the lobby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't make a mess. Everybody having a good time so far? Yeah. What? What? I can't hear you. Are you having a good time? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. I feel like Darth Vader is going to walk into the room. It's very dramatic music. Very dramatic music. I mean, that was a civil war, so. Yeah, that's right. That's, it was a civil war. Do it. Uh, as we all know, the Imperial March doesn't sound anything like that. It's more of a dun, 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 dun. Okay. Good, good. I think that we have asked all of our contestant questions other than those we have on screen. Am I correct about that? Correct. Okay, good, good. So, uh, welcome back. We hope you've enjoyed your chow or enjoying your chow. Uh, we're going to have some pictures up on the screen. Just yell out the name. Again, unless you've already gotten a prize. Um, just yell out the name and everybody keep watching and see who is the first one. So I think is, is Abby, are you doing this or is this an Andrew thing? I, I got it. Yep. We're All right. Here comes Andrew. So the first one, as soon as it comes up, start yelling. I heard someone over here. Was that somebody who already won? I, I heard one over here. All right, Chris, whoever you point to. Uh oh. All right. I'm going to say him and her. All right. Well done. All right. As they start to move, Andrew, go ahead. I heard early over here. Will you stop? <laughs> I, heard, I heard early in the back here. All right. Go ahead. Who are you pointing to, Chris? Make it clear. I think he's just making it up. And yeah. he's just oh, no. He's doing the Tim Smith point. The winner is right here. <laughs> <laughs> he's over here. <laughs> All right. I think they're going to get a little harder, I hope. Jeez. So, yeah, go ahead and hit the table. Plus, I'm hearing a lot of, like, mumbles. Like, what is this, like, early... Like, you know, I mean, you know, go for it, okay? We want to be able to hear you here. Andrew? Wasn't his mustache in the back earlier? Or didn't I see this? Anyone? Yeah, you don't, thank you, Craig, for uh, uh, abiding by the rules. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you a hint here. I don't know if anybody else... What? Yes. What, did somebody look it up or something? Well done. Get up there, sir. It's amazing what Google recognition can now yeah, do. Yeah, Google recognition. I was going to give his first name. Sir, do you know his first name? Anybody? Elon. Elon J. That doesn't get you up there. MacGyver. <laughs> oh. 
Man, you guys are really taking MacGyver. Uh, like, also, Chris White's favorite show from the 80s, Absolutely. as far as I remember. Yeah. Uh, all right, Andrew? Oh, I heard a McLaws back here. Who said that? All right, go for it, man. Proper pronunciation of his first name? I know it. <laughs> Not Lafayette. Lafayette, who said that? Is that? Okay, go for it, ma'am. I thought it was my colleague, Melissa Wynn, <laughs> answering that. Well done. Because she wants stuff moved from Chris's office to hers. That's, yeah, that's exactly. Now, Gary Gallagher believes he has the best beard of the Civil War, and I strongly disagree. I think it's just hanging there, and it probably smells weird. But um, <laughs> I think there's a lot of great Civil War beards. Something to consider, maybe for Getty's Nerd Game Show Round 2, uh, or, or event number 2. All right, Andrew, go ahead. Hunt, who said that? Did you win yet? Over here. Hey, what, what are you doing? Did you win yet? Oh, my apologies then. Go on up. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are All you right. doing? Yeah. Anyone know his middle name? What? Not James, I don't think. It's Chris Mikowski's favorite human beings. Yeah. Last it is name. a J. What? Who said that? One more and you're out of the room. <laughs> Henry Jackson Hunt. And I'm serious. Or am I? All right, Andrew? Wow. Oh, that was quick. That was quick. That sounded like you. All right, get up there, sir. There's none of this surrogate. This is getting out of hand, Chris. I've really lost the crowd here. All right, Andrew? I don't think we ever had them. You want it obscure? Yeah. His middle name is Brevard, if it helps at all. He's in the Third Corps. His soldiers hated him. <laughs> Not Sickles. <laughs> all right, anybody going once, going twice? Chris? Joseph Carr. Joseph Carr. Joseph Carr. All right, Andrew? One of my favorites. This is for you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Elton John. <laughs> If you didn't already win a prize, that would probably do it. <laughs> he liked to drink what, what Chris? Uh, rum. They called him rum. Rum. What? I heard of Jones over here. Oh, oh it was Pete Vermilia. Yes. <laughs> Unallowed. I'm going to take his bag away from him <laughs> and his trophy. <laughs> David Rum Jones. Okay. Andrew? My ancestor fought in his brigade. M middle name after a Polish... Military man? They don't watch our videos at all, man. No, they don't, man. <laughs> they probably watch the Adams County Historical Society. No, Monument Monday. Monument's Monday. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want some Tim Smith, though, really? Ooh, what? Tim got a fly near him. Oh, let's make a video about that. <laughs> all right, that is Samuel Kachusko Zook. Okay, go ahead. We got all of Chris's favorites here. Yeah, this is another. I mean, that, this I, is for you. You would have thought I put this together. Yeah. What? Pete. Pete? No, Heath. No, it's not Heath. He's known as Billy Fixon. Uncle. You Uncle. know him, I guess. No? Chris? West Point class, 1846, Cadmus Wilcox. Cadmus Everybody Wilcox. liked this guy. In the, he was in everyone's wedding from the class of 46. Pretty cool. All right, what do we got? Are we done? No, we're done. Okay, well done, everybody. Well done. Now, I see some other things we still have to give away over there. Uh, but not too many, so well done, everybody. Apparently, no one likes Starbucks in Gettysburg. They're, Man, I'm about to grab those myself. <laughs> They're waiting for the reopening of Gary's Coffee Shop. <laughs> Which was a question on the quiz. Yes, that it was. Okay, what do you say? Are we ready to get back with our contestants here? All right. So, Chris, what are the scores going into this final set of rounds? Uh, so, tie for first, we have George and Michael, not George Michael. But we have two different people, and uh, Nancy is in uh, technically third place with eight points. So it's a close race. Right now, it's still honestly anyone's game. Now, Chris, do you still have that Wham poster up on your wall? Well, I hung it in our, you know, joint house that we have. Okay, good, good. I get it. Ooh, we got a little clap there. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Um, all right, so things are going to get real. Uh, what we're going to do is have a round here. Then we're going to have a super, what we think is a very hard question, and then we're going to get on to final nerdery. But we still have a few more rounds of questions to go. Chris Mikowski, take it away. All right, I'm going to shake things up a little bit, and I'm going to start with Michael and move down the table that way. Wow. 
I know. These questions uh, will concern civilians, which, of course, you can find out more about the experience of the civilians beyond the battlefield. See what I did there? Here at the museum. Uh, make sure you have the chance to check out their exhibits while you're here this week. These questions are each worth four points. What is the name of the wartime caretaker of Gettysburg's Evergreen Cemetery? Michael Thorne? Peter Thorne. Oh. Oh, and, and were we looking for Peter or Elizabeth? Did you say wartime or during the battle? Wartime caretaker. Okay. We would have taken either one, but Tim's on. Aren't you still on the yeah. board over there at the cemetery? That's why there's extra I was the president of Evergreen Cemetery. <laughs> yeah. so, so, well then, Tim Smith, how do you feel about him getting the surname, but not the first name? Oh, the audience wants you to, to go. Uh, Chris, do we want half credit? I'll, I'll give him two. Okay. Half credit. Half credit. All right. So that's two right, of the right, four right, points. Well done, man. Um, tough. This is tough, guys. Yeah, we got to separate you all half, somehow. Half the crowd wanted them to get the points, and then half the crowd's like, no. So. Yeah, no. I mean, I saw George's wife. She was like, absolutely not. I didn't deserve <laughs> any points here. <laughs> all right, Nancy. Which local African-American resident was awarded a contract to disinter and rebury soldiers' remains in the National Cemetery. That would be Basil Biggs. Correct. All right. Very good. Well done. Although I think it's pronounced Basil. Oh, okay. You're going to dock some points for that? No. Okay. So she's good. Because I, you know, I never make a pronunciation error. <laughs> <laughs> All right, George, which local attorney preserved the first land at Gettysburg at what he described as East of Cemetery Hill? Oh, boy. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> We're making George think for the first time today. Which local attorney preserved the first land at Gettysburg at what he described as East of Cemetery Hill? Well, it's either David Wills or uh, David McConaughey. So I will go with the second McConaughey. It is David McConaughey. All oh, right. Nice. Wow. Nice. Wow. Well, first of all, uh, my compliments, George, on showing your work. I like that. And then, Chris, I'd like to interrupt with a special announcement real yes, quick. Yes. Um, because people love it when I'm on my videos and I get things wrong. And I did get something wrong earlier. And that is that I put on the sheet, I transposed Armistead's brigade and Pettigrew's brigade in the answer about 60% plus casualties um, uh, during the battle. So that would not have changed who was on stage, but it would have uh, flip-flopped fourth and fifth place between Pete Vermilia and Seth Maxfield. So Seth Maxfield actually should have gotten one more point. He was awarded two of the three. Should have gotten one more point for that. So I wanted to make that announcement. My apologies, guys, uh, for switching that around. Luckily, the trophies for fourth and fifth place were the same. <laughs> so that made things pretty convenient. Nobody had to do any switching there. So excuse my special announcement. Chris Mikowski? Very good, very good. We're going to continue on with our theme of civilians. These points continue to be worth four points, these questions. Michael, what local civilian operated a tannery that was occupied by sharpshooters on the south edge of Gettysburg? Rupp. That is correct. All right. Very nice. Nancy. What is the name of the chaplain killed on the steps of Christ Lutheran Church? <laughs> I swear this is all random. <laughs> she, she likes chaplains. That would be Reverend um, Horatio S. Howell. Yeah. That is correct. All right. Boy, I, I haven't seen anyone get excited about a question like that. that was <laughs> well, literally, it's like asking me a Devil's Den question. I know. Or a <laughs> Alexander Gardner question. So. Yeah, as soon as I started with what photographer, Gary said, ooh, let me answer. <laughs> George, what hotel sat at the intersection of the Emmitsburg Road and the Baltimore Pike at the time of the battle? Please go out in the audience. Uh, could you repeat? Repeat the question. <laughs> what hotel sat at the intersection of the Emmitsburg Road and the Baltimore Pike at the time of the battle? Uh, 
Wagon Hotel. That is correct. All right, well done. Now, Chris, did we have an almost expulsion from the audience we here? We did, because so, I heard it from over here, as Tim would say. Over there somewhere. So that's two people who are on the bubble now. And I'll point to you like this, because I don't know who the second one is. <laughs> All right. Um, is that the end of a round? Or we still have one So that's the end of our civilian round. Okay, then we still have a few more, but let's give a little break to see where we are in the scores, Chris. Uh, so we have George pulling ahead of Michael. Uh, we have 18 points there, 16 for Michael, and Nancy is now moving up here, tied for second place. Oh my God, it's a ooh, nail biter. Ooh, it's close, it's close. Very good. All right, so our next round is worth five points each. These relates to the battlefield. Okay, uh, Michael? What two grassy battlefield avenues are spelled the same except for one letter? Custer Avenue and Coster Avenue. Woo! That is correct. Wow, well done. That one is not easy. Real quick, uh, Custer, of course, is out on East Cavalry Field. It leads to his cavalry shaft there. And Coster is, of course, where one of the hidden gems of Gettysburg is. Go see the Custer Avenue mural if you haven't. And uh, it's, as Tim would say, grassy. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the key to the question was grassy avenue. Although I'm not sure if other than East and West Confederate Avenue, if and even those are separated by more than one letter. We'd have to look into that. But that's a non-issue, isn't it? Yes, because right. got it. <laughs> Proceed, sir. <laughs> Gary was super excited for that question. Too. Yes. So, all right. Nancy, Nancy, name three of the farmers whose barns were burned during the battle. Here, that would be Bliss, Sherfy, and Harmon. That is correct. Wow. <laughs> Think, things are getting real. Uh, now, Tim, what else would we have accepted there? Um, Herbst, we would accept it. And uh, we were thinking about Currens. All right, Currens maybe half like respect. Like you get, the, you get no, no points, yeah. but we go like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, sorry. George, which North Carolina soldier had his name carved on a Spangler's Meadow boulder? Coble. That is correct. All right. No hesitation there. Okay. Am I correct, Chris, that it is time for the speed round? We have the lightning round coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to throw so many questions at you. Your heads are about to spin. <laughs> All right. So we need uh, maybe a few seconds after each person starts. We start the music. Uh, after that, uh, you know, uh, you're going to get one point for each question you can answer correctly. If you only make it through five and you get them all right, well, then it's five. If you make it through all seven and get none of them, how many is that, Chris? If you get none of them? Yes. You get zero. That is zero, yes. as a matter of fact. Good. Just making sure you understand. But notice I had now, to put in the Pete Vermilia dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris. Are you ready to go? I'm going to give it my best. All right. Michael. Are you right? So we are the, uh, 35 seconds. Who's our timekeeper here? Andrew will start the song after, uh, after five seconds. So Andrew, you give me the go and I'll start firing questions. No, no, you start and five seconds later, he starts the 30 second song. Exactly. We only have a 30 oh, second song, we've got the 35. All right. <laughs> we couldn't afford the other five seconds. So no, they wanted rights. If they you play rights. it for 31 <laughs> seconds, you have to pay, you know. They're like, hey, that's the extended version. That's more, you know, so okay. <laughs> Are we ready? What aid commander was the first to be captured at Gettysburg? Archer. Who wrote the massive book Gettysburg the Second Day? Of uh, Fonts. What monument features a wolfhound? The Irish Brigade, New what York. What woman is known as the only civilian killed at Gettysburg? Ginny Wade. Name the geometric location that includes Cushing's Battery and Armistead's Mark. Angle. Who portrayed Robert E. Lee in the Gettysburg Martin movie? Sheen. What is your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> and that is time. 
<laughs> now, I like, that was his biggest pause of the day. <laughs> so I was keeping score. Did he actually answer the question? He did. He, he, he said end, red. He, he, he said red. Now, hold on. Chris White, given. is red his favorite color? What? I your a favorite I, color. I don't think it's his favorite color. I think he hesitated too long. Come on, then. We need to deal with this. Mike, do you have any sort of proof? I mean, is he wearing any red? I don't see any. You know, do, do you have proof that red is your favorite color? <laughs> Mm. Well, I mean, I'm injured so often. I mean, I see nothing. So, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, let me ask. So it sounds like you have a supporter in one of the two people about to be kicked out of the room. I'm not sure if that's going to help. Chris, how many points did he get? He got all seven. All right. Well done. Um, is there any way to turn that music down a little bit that's while they're good. answering? Yep. That would be great. Um, okay. Uh, Nancy and Chris are nice and close together. Are you ready? Are you ready, Nancy? Are you ready? Okay. At whose house did President Lincoln stay in Gettysburg? David Wills. At what rise of ground did Sickles' salient come to a point? The Peach Orchard. When five 12th Corps brigades left Culp's Hill, who remained on the hill? General Green. Which monument features a flaming cannonball? The Louisiana Monument. Who portrayed James Longstreet in the movie Gettysburg? I can't think of his name. Who wrote the Gettysburg Campaign, A Study in Command? Edward Connington. What is your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza, all and right. It is time. <laughs> Tom Berenger. Tom Berenger. Uh, Chris White, how did she do? Um... She got five and a half. What was the half? Coddington. What did she say? Edward and not Edwin. Oh, did, did she Edwin. say an Edwin now? What, what did you hear? He, Mike Lentz, his co Mike? competitor, said he heard He doesn't Edwin. even know his favorite color, and you're going to go after this guy? <laughs> <laughs> if he's willing to give her the point. This is up to you, yeah. Chris. Uh, are you willing to give her the point, Michael? Yes. He's vouching. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's good enough for me. Woo! So we had six of seven. All right. The last name. Yeah, uh, George is up here like, just go with the last name, which <laughs> is a great bit you, of advice. You today, can't yeah? help but wonder that's if right. Mike Lentz would have gotten the Thorn one right if he just said Thorn. It's yeah, you know, right. yeah, see, less see, information. See. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you ready, George? Yes. All right. On what rise of ground sits the Peace Light Memorial? Oak Hill. Who is known as the only civilian to fight at Gettysburg? John Burns. What monument features palmetto trees? South Carolina. What's the popular name of the 1st Brigade, 1st Division, 1st Corps? Iron Brigade. Who wrote Gettysburg, A Journey in Time? Bill Frazanito. Who portrayed Joshua Chamberlain in the Gettysburg movie? Jeff Daniels. What is your favorite U.S. state? New York. Well done. Oh, we have, we have some real fans of New York in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I love New York. I love Let me New guess, York. Some people yeah. from Jersey out there, right? Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> I'm from Jersey as well. All right, but he likes New York more. But what? notice, the, the dude who just said, just go with last names. He's like, William Fresnito. No, no. I almost wanted to suggest he get extra points because he didn't say William. He familiarized it yeah. like he's at the Reliance Mine Saloon or something. <laughs> Bill Fresnito. Good, good. So, Chris, how did he do? Uh, so, George scored a perfect seven there. So, we're 29. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. 29 for George, 28 for Michael, and 27 for Nancy. Oh, my God. Anything can happen Close here. Game. Anything can happen. So, Chris, am I correct that we have a tough series of questions worth a whole lot coming up? We do. This is the super nerdy nerd round. <laughs> uh, some what? might say Getty's nerdery. Getty's nerdery. Uber Getty ner ner nerdery. I can't even <laughs> say it. It's so, it's so nerdy, I can't even say it. So, all right. So... We will, these are each worth seven points. We will read three first names. I'm going to come over actually by Gary because he's got visual aids for Let's us. Make sure we're doing the right one. Okay. This one? Yep. Okay. All right. So. Are you still starting with Mike? Yes. We'll okay. still start with Mike. Good. Okay. We will read three first names that form some sort of a group. And you respond with the last names in that order. 
Okay, so for instance, if I say Abraham, Jefferson, Andrew, the answer is Lincoln, Davis, Johnson. You get 15 seconds. All right, you ready, Gary? Yep. Okay, Mike, you ready? Add the three surnames to these three 11th core names in this order. Francis, Adolf, Carl. Barlow, von Steinbeer, Schertz. Very oh. good. All correct. Chris? Tim? All correct. All correct. correct. Oh, well done, dude. God, yeah, he did not good. need 15 well, seconds he there. Well done. He even he added the one to the von Steinwehr. So. Yeah, but did he? I mean, I was looking for a fun Steinwehr, sort of like more of like the German. Well, where's Seth back there? Yeah, there were you Seth. say that von, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, okay, let's confirm which one is coming up Nancy. next. Is this the Confederate one? Confederate. Yep. Let me make sure you... You should have been in the room yes. when we were writing these questions. It's like, that's too hard. No, that's too nerdy. Like, we were fighting with each other about yeah. how it. was super nerdy back then. It really was. Yeah. How many Chris's does it take to write questions? At least two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nancy, are you ready? Add the three surnames to these Confederate division commanders in this order. George Johnston Isaac. Anderson. Pettigrew, Hayes. Not correct. So um, Pickett, Pettigrew, and Tremble. I think what we are looking for there is division commanders. So, so I think it right away you said George Anderson. So he's a brigade commander. Uh, and then uh, Isaac, you were coming up with Avery. So we were looking for Pickett, Pettigrew, Trimble. Uh, any points for that, Chris? That would be three points for that. Three points. All right. One correct. All right. Good, good. I like Isaac Hayes as an answer, though. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's <laughs> but, uh, you know, what is it that Chef is selling at South Park? Are we allowed to talk I, about it? I don't it? think we can say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We have our final one. Hold on. Let me make sure I got the right one. Okay. I do. Okay. And this one doesn't look especially easy to okay. read. Okay. Let's see. So. Nancy, just for your edification, I guessed George Anderson, too. So, um. All right, George, you ready? Yes. Add the three surnames to these fifth core first names in this order. Hannibal, Sidney, Stephen. That will be Hannibal Day, Sidney Burbank, Stephen Weed. That is correct. Wow, right, right. look at that. He's hanging tough. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting into our final round to see who the nerdiest of the Gettys nerds are. Yes. So we need to check our leaderboard. Chris, how are things looking? Uh, so George is still in the lead, 36. Uh, Michael is hot on his heels with 35, and Nancy's at 30. Uh, so it's still anyone's game here. Okay, so anyone's game, particularly because now we're going to ask our candidates to bet points. And this is it. This is it. Once there's a tie, this is it. This okay. Is it. You can okay. bet up to, you have to bet at least two, and you can bet up to eight points. Okay. Given only the category, there's a show that uses this sometimes. I don't know. That gives you the oh, category. Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Yeah, that must be it. Yeah. Okay. Pat Sajak just So retired. the category is the Gettysburg Campaign, and you will have to write your bet. On this sheet here, you can bet anywhere, but did I say between three and eight? You're just making it up, two and two eight. Two and eight, yeah, I am. <laughs> we had to wait to see the score. So between two and eight points, that's no fewer than two and no more than eight, okay? And then we will read you the question, and then you will have 30 seconds to answer, okay? And that answer, and you, oh, that answer will be given in writing. Yeah, you'll write your, your answers on the pads of paper that have been provided to you. We don't, unfortunately, have Jeopardy screens where their bad handwriting shows up in the front. So. Yeah, right now I'm thinking of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> don't show your competitors, oh. even, even though some of y'all are very nice to each other, giving points away and whatnot, oh, but here's going to be your big piece of paper. Um, I only have two big markers, though. Did he just run? Did Andrew just depart the room? 
Yeah, he did. So he's probably going to get a third mark. There's one. There's one. I'll give you the scorer's marker. Okay. What is this? The wow. Ooh. If you yeah, have a red one, does. Michael would use it. If you have a red one, Michael would use oh, it. Oh, I think blue is his favorite color, isn't it? <laughs> Michael. <laughs> um, All right. Okay, hold on. So has everybody given their bets? Are they folded? Yeah, put them right in front of you next to your name there. Okay, it looks like Andrew's ready with the score. Uh, does anybody have any questions? All righty then. I have one. <laughs> okay, yes you do, Chris. Okay, are the contestants ready? Ready. Well, they, they don't seem really ready. That was really, they've rocked today, haven't they? First of all, a round of applause for them, the way they rock like this. And they're just we... unenthusiastic because the, the lunch from the break is coming back to them a yeah. little bit. Speaking of lunch from the break, you know, is, are the food trucks gone or are they still open? They are there until, I think, 6.30. So Ooh, okay, good. Right. So if you haven't used your you voucher haven't yet, you can still pop out at the end because I don't think that this is going to take so long to answer. So uh, <laughs> any reason we shouldn't move forward here? Tim, Chris? Let's go. All right. Soon we will know who is the ultimate Gettys nerd. Chris? All right. Are you ready, candidates? And you're just going to write down your answer. You're clear on this, right? Okay. On the big board. Okay. All right. Okay. Name the two Pennsylvania towns on each immediate side of the bridge burned by northern troops on June 28th, 1863. <laughs> To celebrate the 160th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg, the American Battlefield Trust is going behind the scenes to take you from the banks of the Rappahannock River all the way to the town town of Gettysburg and the iconic battlefield locations beyond. In this episode of the American Battlefield Trust podcast, you'll hear from Chief Historian Gary Edelman, Chris White. Oh, well, we're done. See where I'm <laughs> All right, so I don't think we worked this part out. Uh, well done, by the way. Uh, he worked in radio, but without a face made for radio. Oh, you're so kind. I'd be nice oh. once in a while. That's literally the nicest thing he's ever it, said. It probably know. actually is. And Chris was just editing the podcast that was this question was based off of. Oh, wow. A video oh, last right. year where Gary and I were on the banks of that river. Okay, when well, he sort of gave that away, but I saw all papers were down already. So... In what order are we going to reveal answers, then the bets? So we're going to start with um, Nancy, who is standing at 30 points. Nancy, your answers. Columbia and Wrightsville. Judges. That is correct. That is correct. All right. And how many points did no, you... No, no, no. That's at the very end. Oh, how does Jeopardy... Wow. What are you doing now? Man. <laughs> Okay, you're right. It's How many points did you wager? Eight points. <laughs> that brings her, Chris, the tally board now. Who's in the lead? Nancy went big. Nancy went big, big and it pays off. off. Go big or go home, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> at second place is Michael with 35. Michael, your answers are? Wrightsville and York. Oh, oh man. Oh. They turned on Mike Lentz real quick. <laughs> how many did you wager? And how many did he wager? Eight points. Oh, oh Chris needs the oh, double eraser for that, man. Ooh, the disappointment was palpable. It was. Chris, what does that take him to? Oh, actually, 27 points. Yeah, I was going to call you on that there. 27. Right. Okay, hold on. Do we need a drum roll or something? George, your answer was upside down. <laughs> Columbia and Wrightsville. Okay, so hold on. No, don't do hold it on. yet. We, we could be looking at a tie if he only bet two. Or we could have the ultimate Gettys nerd here. Chris, are you ready? I am. And if it is a tie, we do have a tiebreaker prepared. All right. So this, could, this is it. It's all going, George. He went all in. Eight points. Eight points. Wow. Woo. Now, 
I, you know, I know Andrew's got a thing here because we got to talk about, you know, we have, we have some prizes to do and Chris do, but, but first, are you glad your wife signed you up? <laughs> yes, this, uh, I, I think I owe her dinner at least. <laughs> well done, well done. Congratulations on be <laughs> becoming the ultimate Gettys nerd. Uh, wow. I think now I turn things over to someone else, right? In, yes, and we're going to tell you what you have won in third place. Mike uh, hold on. Thank you. <laughs> has won a $30 Sign of the Buck restaurant gift card, two tickets to October 5th's uh, ABT event on Seminary Ridge, a $50 Amazon gift card, an ABT tote bag, a ABT maps book, uh, an ABT challenge coin, all from Chris's office, I presume, <laughs> and an ABT notebook. Congratulations, Mike. Woo! And, and the coveted third place trophy. It says, what's it say on there, Mike? Third. <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> Gazer Quiz 2024. There, there are words below it. <laughs> you know. And in second place, Nancy has won. An original piece of the Gettysburg Cyclorama painting. A complimentary one-year membership at ACHS, although you're already a member, so we'll, we'll add a year on to your current one. Two tickets for August 16th Gettysburg hike with ABT and a $50 Amazon gift card. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. And the moment we... <laughs> I found that out a couple of times. The moment we've all been waiting for, the presentation of the trophy. Woo! Congratulations, George. Uh oh, no, 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 no. Uh oh. George can't take that out onto the battlefield. Uh, so we wanted to make sure <laughs> that you knew in your office that he is the greatest of all time. <laughs> and, but because you can't take this on the field as well, Oh. He also has the GOAT medal <laughs> to go with it. And it says, Ultimate Gettys Nerd Quiz Grand Champion. And it even comes with a little stand they can hold it on. So George, just like the Olympics, you are a gold medalist. Woo! I got something else. Okay. Uh, but wait, there's more. But I wait. Mean, Chris loves this stuff. What's going on there? So I, I wanted to give out two special awards today. Um, number one is to our friend Tim Smith. You're not allowed to look at this. <clears throat> number one is to uh, our friend Tim Smith. Because Tim, as we learned over the years, all Gary talks about is local crap. <laughs> and that's what Tim knows. <laughs> so as we were always putting this out, Gary's like, oh, Tim can do that local crap for us and write those questions. So... With Tim's new office, I decided to give him a uh, little memento that says, presented to Tim Smith, leading expert in Adams County, quote unquote, local crap, <laughs> as proclaimed by Gary Edelman, and there's a toilet on it. <laughs> so Tim, this is for you. Great. And the other Wait, trophy. Oh, Tim's looking flushed over there. Oh. Nice. Wow. wow. What a crappy thing to say. <laughs> and Gary, when he came up with this, he, we have this term. We call ourselves losers for knowing so much about Gettysburg. You know, we're Gettysburg losers. And um, I thought it was just appropriate that uh, for the ultimate Gettysburg loser... Gary Edelman. Wow. He gets his own trophy. And if you notice at the top, Gary, what's at the top? Well, I, I think it says loser. And I'm going to generously say that that's soft serve chocolate ice cream. Yes, over a <laughs> toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so I expect this to be in the American Battlefield Trust offices soon. Absolutely. So, Gary, I would like to present you with the ultimate loser award for Gettysburg. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Andrew? I just want to thank you all again for coming out today. I want to thank our two sponsors for the event, The Sign of the Buck, a brand new restaurant on Chambersburg Street. If you haven't been there yet, it's really, really great. Yeah. And of course, the Dobbin House Tavern, our longtime friend and supporter. So thank you to these two great local businesses. Uh, 
think we also have some prizes left. So if you haven't gotten one until uh, until they're gone, you're yeah, welcome. Yeah, it's to like come it's up. like that. Uh, you know, like that. You know, there's some gloves left with only one finger missing. <laughs> like it's one of those like just absolutely charge the table. Hey, Sarah. So. Add some order. If you know they already came up, stop them. Like, give a nice body check or something like that to one of them. Chris, you can maybe trip a few people and kick them or something like that. Um, I want to thank the Adams County Historical Society for so generously hosting us today and doing a lot of the hard work. And my co-host, Chris Mikowski. And I don't have an award for them, but to our judges over here, Tim Smith and Chris White, making this a lot of fun. Sarah Byerly and the staff of the ACHS for helping us out. And to all five of our contestants and all y'all for coming today. Thank you so much. That's the get out of here music, right after you pick up something.